You might be thinking, is Base32 a real thing? Yes, it is. How to get the SQL ID? Here's the question that came in. Obviously, whenever we are SQL tuning, the SQL ID is just about the most important thing that you have to know. And it's the thing we often do with SQL tuning. You go querying v$sql or v$sql error, v$sql stats, et cetera. And you look for stuff which is expensive and then you find the SQL ID. Because once you've got that, you can go get the plan, et cetera. It's obviously like, it's almost like the primary key to SQL text in the library cache. This customer has an application that after I had a, a bit more of a chat with them, creates dynamic SQL. They have an ad hoc searching facility and it dynamically creates SQL. What they wanna do, which I think is a very cool idea, is run their SQL that these users have created on the fly. Find out the SQL ID for that SQL. Go query things like v SQL stats, v SQL to find out what the buffer gets were, what the disk reads were, what the parsing time was, et cetera. So they can actually capture some performance metrics in real time in the application itself, not doing things like separate tracing, et cetera. So I think it's a very cool little idea. The question is, if you have a piece of SQL text, how do you know what the SQL ID is? We can get very, very close. In fact, I'd argue that we can actually do better than the SQL ID. It sounds almost impossible, but let me explain. Way back in Oracle 12, we added to the DBS utility function, the get SQL hash function. Let's see how it works because it's a little bit cryptic. I'm gonna start in reverse. I'm gonna start with a known SQL and a known hash value. I'm gonna take select 99 from dual, very, very simple SQL statement, run that and then query it at a VLSQL SQL that says the hash value is 835, 694, et cetera. The question is, does DMS utility got get SQL hash value give me that back? And the answer is no. So let me explain why. If you just pump it in like this, there's my SQL text, get SQL hash, you get an answer which doesn't appear correct. For reasons I will never know, you have to take your SQL text and append a CHR zero. Anyone that has ever worked with things like C, that's the end of string, typical terminator. Why you have to do it here, I don't know, but you do. You have to add CHR zero. Once you've done that, get SQL hash will return you this, which looks nothing like the hash value you saw on the previous slide, that. But believe it or not, they are one and the same. When this comes out, this is actually the full SQL hash value that is used internally inside Oracle. In fact, in some parts of SQL trace, you'll often see the SQL ID for, for example, dynamic sampling is this huge, big, long decimal number. The SQL ID is just a shortened and a shorthand version of that, as is the hash value you see from v SQL. This is the genuine hash value that is being used in the library cache. What we do is we take the last four bytes, or the last eight, eight pieces of hex characters, take them and convert them to decimal just using two number, and you actually get the hash value. So it is in there, it's just the last piece there. So when you see the hash value in VLSQL, SQL, it's actually just the trailing bytes. It's not the, the genuine hash value, but it's enough to uniquely identify it for you. So that lets you get the hash value out of there. Grab a piece of SQL text, append CHR zero, put it through that function, grab the last four bytes, turn them into a number, and there's your hash value. You can now get it out of v SQL once you've executed your SQL. Why am I saying the hash value, you know, and not the SQL ID? Because you can actually derive oops, the SQL ID out of this. The SQL ID is actually the leading, I think 16 bytes. You convert it to base 32 using a sort of a bit of a cryptic thing. You might be thinking, is base 32 a real thing? Yes, it is. It's an interesting thing inside Oracle, which is zero through nine plus most of the alphabet, not all of it. So that's why I didn't bother doing it here because we don't really need it. So the SQL ID is just a variant of the hash value anyway. So the hash value is the genuine thing. SQL ID is just a nice human readable version of a hash value anyway. You may as well just use the real numeric hash value. It's probably gonna be more efficient to dive into those V$ structures. But there you have it, dbmsutility.getsqlhash with a little bit of perturbation will give you that numeric hash value which you can now query directly out of V$ SQL, V$ SQL stats, V$ SQL area, 
etc., etc., etc. With all SQL Plan, I really like this philosophy of having an application dig into performance metrics about itself, not leaving it to some poor DBA after the fact trying to work out what's going on. I think that's a very, very cool uh, piece of technology this person is building.